Trenton has plenty of coaches inside, but perhaps none quite like the newly initiated Tony Dungy. Back in his Tampa home, could still coach if he really wanted. I'm assuming a lot of teams that are looking for a head coach in January all have the same question. They're all wondering how Tony Dungy's retirement is actually going. <laughs> <laughs> so and how is it going? It's going well. It's going well. <laughs> well enough so th those questions have stopped being asked. Reggie, Marvin, and, and Stokely. His home office, though, is its own years. hall to history. A lot of years and a lot of memories and some special things. First day with the, the Colts. And Memories, mementos from his days leading to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to winning his 100th game in the NFL. And that was always one of my goals, to get 100 wins in 10 years, and it, it happened. And based on the evidence in this room, a lot happened, honoring first wins and visits to see the first family. It's clear Tony Dungy's had a ball. It's all a bit overwhelming, isn't it, a little bit? You walk in, you see all this, and... You, or is it? When you look at it in the entirety, you say, how could this happen? And it does make you thankful. I think you have to do this because you'll think about the disappointments and the losses and all the struggles, and you don't always remember the real neat, mm -hmm. special times. The latest photos honor the moments that led up to his Hall of Fame induction, from getting measured for the jacket to meeting the sculptor, making his bust. They take a a thousand pictures of you, yeah. they take all these measurements, then he works for about six weeks. And he came here to the house with a lump of clay <laughs> and we sat in, in our kitchen for eight hours. And uh -huh. when I came out and looked in front of it, it looked like looking in the mirror. It was fantastic. It's the culmination of 13 years as a head coach, fine tuning a defense known as the Tampa Two. Though he was let go from the Buccaneers, was quickly scooped up by the Colts. His resume includes 139 wins, a Super Bowl 41 title, and relationships that are just as strong. I know there are aspects you probably miss about coaching. What is it, though, that you miss about it? I miss being around the, the group of people. Those are great relationships. A lot of players I've talked to, they all say, I miss the guys. I miss hanging out with the guys in the locker room and the plane rides home and all of that. Uh, you just can't find that anywhere else. You, can. you can't duplicate it. Coming together in shoot, February or March right. and getting a goal in place and, and having ups and downs and sweet times and, and disappointing times, but you're doing it together. Um, it, it really is hard to duplicate that. It is my great pleasure. <laughs> and if you wonder just what the Hall of Fame means, look no further than the moment Tony and his wife Lauren found out. We all saw the emotional video when you found out <laughs> that you made the Hall of Fame. Uh, emotions aside, what does something like this mean? You thank the Lord and you think about all the people that have come through your path. Your parents, you know, you, I think about Coach Noel and, yeah. you know, taking the chance on me as a free agent, conversion from quarterback to safety, and then putting me on the coaching staff at 25 years old. Things that just don't happen. What would Chuck say? He would say, job well done, and uh, I expected that from you. <laughs> <laughs> he was that way. You couldn't have had a better mentor or a better start for my career than working for him. Tony played two seasons for Steelers head coach Chuck Knoll, but life was changing. After graduating from Jackson, Michigan's Parkside High School, he played quarterback for the University of Minnesota. After one-offs with the 49ers and Giants, he got into coaching in 1981 as an assistant for Noel. The rest is history. When you grew up, you used bad language. Uh, you had a temper. Where did all that change? It changed slowly but surely. My mom and dad for years talked about, you know, doing things the right way, making good decisions. You can't make good decisions when you're angry. But of course, as a teenager, I tuned them out. Mom and dad don't know anything. <laughs> they don't know. No. They never do. That's right. And then I got to Pittsburgh and playing for the Steelers, and Coach Noel was always about making the next play better, doing the right thing the next time. But my, my high school teammates and my buddies, when people talk about me being composed and <laughs> under control, they just they, laugh. They, laugh. they all know better, right? They know yeah. better, yeah. If you didn't change, does any of this happen, do you think? Probably not. No, you're, you're right. 
the calm, cool demeanor has served him well, whether it's a run-in with Mel Blunt. This picture was a ball that Archie Manning threw and the receiver fell down. It was coming right to me. So you're playing a center fielder right here. You're ready field, to go. And I got it and Mel didn't see me and we ran into each other and the ball just fell to the ground. The one that got away. To what he calls his favorite Colts memory, winning the AFC Championship in Indy. Because even celebrating after the Super Bowl, it was like half the stadium was gone because the Bears fans leave, but this one was, nobody was leaving. Um, Are you kidding me? The city had waited too long to <laughs> celebrate something like that, so. From a wall to the hall, timing's everything, and Tony's time is now. And to think, before the Colts, you were let go from the Bucks. so What's the story? Is, is the story, it's funny how it all works out? Well, I think or? the story is you have to trust the Lord and everything that looks like a wrong turn isn't necessarily a wrong turn. Life goes on even through disappointments.